Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting off-season episode with your host, Paul Dosky. Um, I've been trying to get a hold of this guy for a couple uh, weeks or so now, but um, he's finally here. So, you may know him on Twitch as Masuka101, but I'm going to give him the chance to introduce himself. So, Jack, please say hello. Hello, I'm Jack. I uh, stream on Twitch, and that's where I met Paul, actually. He was my first, like, regular viewer on Twitch, so that's pretty cool. Um, about three years ago now, I think it was, wasn't it? It was definitely when the first Outlast came out. So, was it three years ago? I think it was, 2014. Yeah, yeah. it was about three years ago. Yep. Uh, but yeah, like Paul said, I stream on Twitch, and uh, yeah, it's it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, you were just saying uh, earlier on the stream that you were changing your uh, your Twitch name. Yes, I'm gonna go for like a, I well, I'm going for an identity crisis at the moment, <laughs> and I really, I really want to change my Twitch name because I don't like my Twitch name at the moment. So. Well, what's your like goal of it? I guess like what made you go? I think I want to change my name. Like what kind of started that? I guess. Well, when I first made my name, it was like 10 years ago, so my like likes and dislikes have changed, and uh, it's sort of like st- uh, stuck me to the past, if you know what I mean. Okay. So it, I think a, a change would be good. I, I, don't, I, I don't particularly like it, because it doesn't really mean anything. It's not really personal, and it's quite hard to... Like spell and people always say it wrong and stuff like that. So, so you're looking for something more easier and more something memorable, kind of like something easy to remember, pretty much is like what you're looking for. Yes, yeah, and something more personal to me as well. Yeah, so. cause that would be good too. As long as you like it and it's personal, or even if it's not personal, as long as you just like it, then hey, um, I mean, all for it, man. I hope that one day you do find that right name for yourself. Um, I just need to have an epiphany. And like, <laughs> <laughs> I've got all these names written down on my, this whiteboard that people have been giving me, so hopefully a good one will pop out soon. Well, maybe put them all in a hat, maybe. Write them all down, put them in a hat, and grab one. <laughs> Go <by> that. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. If or, I can't decide soon, I'll do that. Or maybe, like, um, I don't know if there's a way, but uh, Discord maybe offer, like, a poll where you could add them to a poll and people can vote on which one they like the best. Okay, yeah, that's, that yeah. could be good. I, yeah, I mean, there's different ways we could probably go about this. But, uh, yeah, so let's get on with the uh, horror interview here. So, um, so let's start you off with what got you into horror? Like, what? kind of drag, like, draw your attention, drag you into it, or terrified you? <laughs> um, in regards to me being into horror, I do like horror. I'm not, like, a huge, huge, huge fan. I used to be, but not anymore. My tastes have changed over recent years, but the few things that I can remember from, like, my childhood and recent times that made, like, horror, like, quite a good, not a good, but, like, a part of my life that was like significant so back in the day I had a Sega Dreamcast and there was a game on there where you had to, it's like a puzzle game you, there were like ghosts in this house and stuff like that and I, I literally can't remember what I can't remember what the game was called uh, but that was like kind of my first case at it. of horror I guess like your first um, kind of glimpse of it, maybe, or taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it was like um, I, I, I can't remember what the game was called, but don't it was don't feel bad. Was... Don't feel bad. I don't even know which one you're talking about because I didn't really have a Dreamcast, so I wouldn't know what you're talking about anyway. But yeah, it was years and years and years ago. Right. Which, I don't even think In that lasted long. Of... Sorry. Did Dreamcast? Did it last long? Because I don't even remember. Like... Uh, no, I think it lasted like four years, maybe. I might just be making it up, but 
It didn't, it didn't seem to last very long. No. Well, I had a friend that had, like, every console back then, and, and Dreamcast was one of them, but he never really played it either. He was more like PlayStation or Nintendo or something else, but hardly ever talked to Dreamcast, <laughs> so I kind of... Yeah, I remember that fishing game, oh my god. The fishing game? Yeah, the little <laughs> controller. <laughs> oh god. Did you say fishing? Did you say fishing? I said fishing, yeah. Yeah, okay. I said the fishing game, and then I said, oh, my God. <laughs> I think I know which one you're talking about, too. But everybody has had to have played. Maybe even you, maybe not. I mean, I won't judge if you haven't, but duck hunting. I mean, I think we all played duck hunting when we were little. Uh, back on the SNES or NES. Yeah, it was like the Nintendo, <laughs> like where you could put it on the wall, I believe. <laughs> If my memory served me correctly. God, am I really that old? No, I can't remember. I can't either. But, um, so, okay, so Sega Dreamcast, you would say, is what kind of maybe got you into it at first with this puzzle game that we're not really remembering the name of? <laughs> yeah, and li- um, there was that. And another uh, game I remember that I had on the Dreamcast was um, House of the Dead 2. Phenomenal game. If you remember that game. I do. I remember playing it at the arcade and on uh, PS3, to be honest. Uh, which is that oh, game. really? Wow. Yeah, they they brought back uh, The House of the Dead for PS3. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yep. They, um, they brought it out because of the whole PlayStation Move. If that was what it was called, if I remember correctly, God, it's been years. Oh, yeah, yeah, the movie, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they did they brought... the... Go ahead. The Grindhouse solo one. The Grindhouse? You mean Overkill? It was like had a Grindhouse style. Hmm. Are we still talking like House of the Dead? Or are we talking something else? Yeah, House of the Dead. Um... Was it Overkill? I know they made Overkill, uh, like a... Uh... Yeah, yeah, Overkill, that's the one. Yeah. That was actually pretty decent, to be honest. I didn't mind that one. But the old... Yeah, it had good, um, a lot of people like that, actually. And it was, like, very, like, bonkers, if I remember. Yes. I, I felt it definitely required somebody else to play with, though. So. Yeah, yeah, it was like a, um, it was like a fun game you could, like, just have a laugh with, you know? It wasn't like a serious Oh, God, game, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, you're just killing zombies while shooting whatever up. So, yeah, it was definitely fun. That story, though, was different, I guess I'll say. Like, it was definitely different than, like, your normal uh, House of the Dead, like, arcade games. Like, where you're actually going into, like, this creepy mansion and shooting up the place or whatever. So, Yeah, that's a good, um, different, like, different take on it. So, that's good. Yeah, so what about, like, horror films, though? Like, did any horror films kind of strike you to be like, oh, this was, this is good enough kind of thing? Yes. Well, me and, well, between me and my friends and my brother and sister, horror films are always like a, kind of like a, a, a taboo, really. So it kind of got to a stage where we thought we shouldn't be watching them because they are scary, so made us want to watch them a bit more. And the first film I can remember, like, actually watching, I did have to turn it off halfway through, <laughs> was uh, Sleepy Hollow. Really? So, yeah, this this was when I was very young, though. Well, let me ask you so, this. What part, though? What part did he have to shut it off at? When I turned it off, you know when he's going to see, there's like a woman and she jumps at the screen. I can't remember the exact... Oh, when um, Ichabod Crane, a.k.a. Johnny Depp, is in the cave with the witch, where she's got her self yeah, chained to the, the chair. Witch, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I know That'd we are. Off. So pretty much before so, yeah, all the good we... stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> but I have, I have watched it fully since, so. And did you enjoy That's, it, at least? It's, I loved it, yeah. I, okay. I thought it was all great. It's such a good atmosphere, and oh, it's brilliant! It's a good, such a good film. But that was probably the first 
horror film that I sort of remember like thinking this is pretty good but also like pretty scary so also I think I rented it from a blockbuster so that tells you how old it is wow yeah blockbuster <laughs> oh boy be careful we might be speaking we're gonna be the dinosaurs pretty soon um oh god yeah <laughs> yeah uh I actually found my blockbuster card like when I was cleaning out my wallet like a few months ago actually and I'm like oh my god um <laughs> but uh what so this is just out of curiosity but have you seen like the silent hill films or like how about john carpenter's like halloween or john carpenter's the thing did you ever see those i have seen the thing that is a fantastic film i must say yes i have uh, just watched it last i haven't night. seen halloween what <laughs> Well, I don't think I have anyway. You don't remember Michael Myers? <laughs> no, like back in like like I said back in the day, um, films were like we weren't meant to be watching them. If you know what I mean. Right, so, right, right. Like, at your little, you're like, I don't know if I should be watching this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, since it's kind of good with like the uh, episode name, but did any of this stuff ever like give you nightmares? Like, did you ever watch something like or saw a part when you were young and you it kind of gave you that nightmare or kind of gave you that like creep where you would like I don't know what to say like one night you had to get up to go get a drink or a bathroom and then you would be kind of like turning on the lights because you didn't want whatever to be there <laughs> in the halls. It's happened a lot of times, a lot of not the lie. But the most, the one that's most, like, vivid in my brain is 13 Ghosts. Oh, jeez. I know, it's a, like a terrible film. It is. But. So good, though. There was a, there was a, ah, uh, there's a ghost in it. I think it's called the Jackal. It's got, like, a cage over its head. I was terrified of that. I, I definitely had, like, nightmares, like, one or two nightmares about that. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen the film, even though I own it, which I'm actually staring at it right now. Like, maybe I should watch this tonight. <laughs> but anyway... Um, Just watch it. Remind me how bad it is. <laughs> right? How bad, but how good it was, too, in a weird way. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, even though it was a bad film, because it had, like, stuff that got me, like, proper scared, I kind of liked it. So Right. All right, um, so you mentioned you were a streamer, so how did it feel like the first time you streamed? First time I streamed, um, I played Zombies, Call of Duty Zombies, back in probably like 2012 maybe, and I was going for a world record on... I think the map Ascension. I don't know if you play Zombies, Paul. I assume not. On Call of Duty? Yeah. I used to. Before I quit okay. Call of Duty. So, yeah, I yeah. know what you're talking about. So, yeah, that was the first stream I did. And would that <laughs> I remember be, I got 20 viewers. Would that, like, a, the 400 like, wave or round or whatever? Like, is it was it up on your YouTube before you made your stuff private? Was it that one? I think it was like 400. I could be wrong. Uh, no, that was um, uh, around 500 on Shino Numa, and that was just me playing offline. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> those, those, those days are gone, though. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot easier on, on that map to get a higher round. So. Okay. But yeah, but you were saying, but uh, so you were streaming zombies with like 20 viewers, you were saying. Yeah. And uh, it felt... I know, I remember I was streaming off my laptop and I couldn't get the game sound and the microphone working at the same time. Oh, no. <laughs> so oh, boy. I just had to switch like between if people were asking questions and stuff. And it was such like a convoluted setup. I had about three different bits of software just all... Like going into each other just to get the stream out, and it's a nightmare. So I kind of gave up on streaming for ages. 
until I played Catalyst mm-hmm. and the PS4 and the Xbox. Uh, well, I have a PS4, so mm-hmm. the PS4 made it really easy to stream. Right. So that's when I started streaming Outlast. And man, that was scary. <laughs> yeah, we're, that was awful. we're actually about to talk about Outlast, actually, because I know um, that's how I met you, which uh, was interesting. I just I still remember that day. I, I was still jobless, and I just barely got done, like, playing the game. And... Um, uh, that one day came about when I was just bored and stuff. I was just like, huh, I wonder who's streaming this. And then I happened to find your channel because I believe at the time you were like the only one streaming it. So I was just like, oh, okay. Well, I'll see how this guy's doing. And, um, <laughs> so I'm just watching. And then I say, you know, my hay and whatever. And then I'm just watching some more and, then out of nowhere, you're just like, God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and then... It was the uh, fuses, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's what it was. It yeah, was, it was the fuses, and I was like... Oh. Yeah, it was it was the, like a... yeah. Yeah, and then it was the part where um, you were kind of not wanting to go after your camcorder when it fell. <laughs> through the cracks of the floor. Oh yes, that bit. Yeah, I was like, I'm not going down there. I swear to God, I'm not going down there. <laughs> I ain't going down there, but I do got to go down there, don't I? Yeah. Oh damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, that was some good times. Good times. So, how did you like Outlast? Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. I don't think "enjoy" is the right word. <laughs> okay. Well, with. what would you use for a word? <laughs> It was an experience. It got me, like, I, I don't know. It was kind of like going back to, like, all the horror films and stuff, like, back in the day, if you know what I mean. So it made you feel like we a little kid again. scares and sort of, yeah. As if, like, we weren't, like, I wasn't meant to be playing it, but I obviously could, if you know what I mean. I don't know if that sounds a bit stupid, but... Hey, we all have moments. I mean... I remember having to look up parts on Outlast 2 because I was kind of confused on where to go. But then when I saw it, I was just like, oh, well, I kind of feel like an idiot, even though I'm not an idiot. But it was kind of just obvious, but it wasn't obvious at the time, I guess. Maybe because after Chris Walker chasing you so many times, you're kind of just like, okay, I need to calm down for a minute. Yeah. (laughs) They're not that scary once you've uh, got you a few times. Which, Calm down. Yeah, which, what did you think of Chris Walker, or even Traeger, but we'll start with Chris Walker, but what do you think of him? Chris Walker, I, when I first saw the design, I didn't, I wasn't really, like, a big fan of it, to be honest, because it, I, like, the first time I thought, saw it, I thought, oh, I was just a, another scary dude, it wasn't really anything new, uh, original, or, yeah, like, new, until you start Diving into like the deeper story of the characters and stuff. So as you know, he was uh, a ex-soldier, isn't he? From yeah, he was an ex-military guy, um, and then they somehow like did an experiment with him, which I forget if it went wrong or if it if this to them succeeded, but either way, yeah, that's pretty much what happened to him. It probably went wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming it did. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's, he chases you around, doesn't he, and you clearly think, oh, he's a bad guy. That's like your first impression of him. But if you read some of the notes and stuff, then, uh, I don't know if you agree with me here, but it's kind of like Chris Walker's trying... It's such like a roundabout way of uh, doing it, but he's trying to kill you to to, uh, keep the Wall Rider in the actual asylum and not let it get out. Right. Because the Wall Rider needs a human to possess and get out, if you know what I mean. Right. I don't know if you agree with that, but that's how I... 
Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but I kind of see what you're saying, so I kind of do agree with you, especially the way Outlast ended. So that would make sense, and that's why, spoiler alert, which everybody should know this by now, anyway, since it's been like four years old technically, because Outlast (laughs) was uh, first released on PC before PS4, but um, Wall, Wall Rider killed... Chris Walker. So, do you think Wall Rider took out Chris Walker because of the fact that he, he was like trying to do like what you were saying, uh, trying to take you out because he didn't want Wall Rider to have you? Yes, I think that makes sense. It's um because he's about to kill you, isn't he, Chris Walker? Right. When the Wall Rider takes. Uh, when the water rider vents its anger on Chris Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the best part in the game. Um, well, best unique part. part, yeah. Um, how about Traeger? What do you think of Traeger the first time meeting him, the doctor? <laughs> I was terrified of him to start with. Like, actually terrified. Because he, he like, this is a good, like... Traeger's a very good character. He's very charismatic, which is very unusual for a villain, if you know what I mean. Right. So as I like that about him, he was, um, he's, he's funny as well, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like, when he, when you're in the little wheelchair and he's, like, showing you the door that's open and he's just like, run, be free! And then he just kind of, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then he's just like, like but you're not me. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then he said something else before he starts taking you away again, and um, then he's in the you're in the operating chair, and then so I don't know. Did you pan to the right to see what he grabbed, or did you kind of focus on like your chair area to, before he grabbed a big? First chair? time I played it, I did pan to the right and I did look what he was doing. So, did you happen uh, to yeah. see him pick up the scissors? Because I believe you can see him pick up the scissors, I think. Yeah, you can see him pick up the scissors. Out of the urinal. <laughs> yeah, the urinal. But, uh, so yeah, what was your reaction when he cut off two of your fingers? <laughs> I was, like, proper, like, disgusted by it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that is the thing. I've seen gory films and everything, but I don't know because um, I don't know. Like, I because I haven't really played a first-person horror game properly before. Right. Because the first time I kind of like grew to like like the character that I was playing as. Right. And that made it a, a bit more intense, if you know what I mean. Because he felt like he was actually doing it to... Right. It's almost like you could feel it yourself kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah. yeah. Like, um, have you ever seen the movie Teeth? Uh, I haven't, but... (laughs) You know what it's (laughs) It's about, though. It's on my list to watch. I do, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay, yeah, yeah. We won't need to go there anymore, then. Um, So... But uh, I'm trying to remember, uh, before the DLC came out, didn't you start to speedrun Outlast as well? Uh, so yeah, um, we played, we pretty much did everything we could on it, so insane mode and everything, and then I saw a lot of other people in the Twitch category speedrun it, and I watched those and I thought, oh, I could do that, so give it a go, so... Yeah, I just literally started speeder on it, and it was... Yeah, uh, I know you did like, your homework, too. It was too. so much fun. Yeah, I know you did your homework, yeah. too, because you were saying, like, you were walking up so many different ways to get past certain parts. Kind of like the whole, um... I'm trying to remember the part, but when you have to shut down the reactor from the wall rider there, where you kind of jumped on the desk or the rail guard there... <laughs> Like that was jump, yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. And then there were a couple That's... others that were interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's a few skips on there. They're like 
I got proper obsessed with it. They kind of even addicted. I don't know if you can say that. Yeah, yeah. But I was obsessed with um, speedrunning, and I and I really liked the game anyway. So I wanted to play it as much as I could. Right. And uh, the live stream seemed to like it as well. So. Oh yeah, it was yeah. probably one of the most viewed games on Twitch at the time. Anyway, that I know of for horror game wise. Um. But yeah, so DLC, which was a Whistleblower, which came out like three months after the main game, when it came out to PS4. Um, so what were you, what were you thinking of the DLC before you went into it? Like, did you have any thoughts like, like is this gonna be scarier? Because I know they kind of showed you uh, the cannibal at first, but they never showed the other guy, which was Eddie, aka the groom. So like. When you went into the DLC, were you kind of like, oh shit, what am I into in 4, I mean? Or did you kind of go in like, oh, I got this? Um, I knew I was going to have a hard time, <laughs> because I was actually terrified of the main game. Like, literally terrified. Um, but we saw play a DLC, you, like, like you said, the uh, you saw the cannibal before. Um, and it was, uh, so I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's all good, dude. Um, the cannibal, yeah. What do you, how, how, how about this? What do you think of the cannibal when you first saw him, which he was like, I want to say eating somebody? Like the blood splatters yeah, on the right. windows or the the glass that he's in, and then you see him, and then he's just like saying, talking about like trying to get you because you're fresh meat, and then he tried to burn you. With there's another like speed run glitch thing there that I can't even remember, but there's something there, I guess. <laughs> but um. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, did you, what What were your thoughts on the cannibal, I guess? Like, <laughs> what did you think of the cannibal as a, as a character or villain? I like the cannibal as a villain because you weren't, like, the first time you see him, you kind of see him through a window, don't you? And you don't really know what, to what, expect. what yeah. he's doing or anything, and you get a bit closer and you realize that he's eating people. Yeah, I do. So how about, he's not the scariest. He, no, I will not say he is either, but he is everywhere <laughs> at one point. Yeah, he's, yeah, <laughs> he seems to be everywhere at all times. Like a saw, like a, his little saw thing, you can hear it buzzing through, like, the walls and stuff. And Right, right, yeah. That's scary. Yeah. The sound, the sound of, like, what you think you're getting into is scary. Right. Um, so what about the groom, a.k.a. Eddie? What do you think of that guy? Like the one that Red Barrow <laughs> didn't tell you about because they wanted him to be a surprise. First, oh my God. I remember I was live streaming my first playthrough of it and everyone was going, they, they didn't give anything away on the chat, which I was very surprised about. Wow, you know, yeah. get spoiled a lot. Wow, yes. Um, but um, everyone was going, Oh, you're in for a... Watch out in a minute. I was like, oh my god, what's going to go on in a minute? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and yeah, that's uh, that's probably like everyone's favourite bit for some reason. I don't know if everyone knows what we're talking about. But... Um, yeah, the part so, when you like got to hide from him in that walker thing, and then he like dragged you to another room, because he pretty much expected you to go into that locker to trap you. Yeah. And he's then like, so he's basically trapped here. Yeah. He's clever, man. Yep. And then he like you wake up like I don't know how many hours later, and then um, you see that one victim who like I can't even remember now gets his uh, ball cut. Then you got another guy that like gets stabbed in the chest or some shit, and then another one his face gets planted on the saw. <laughs> And then you're up on the table. <laughs> then you're up on the table, yeah. Basically, he just wants... He wants to have a family. 
and he needs a wife, apparently, for a family. Yep. However, there's no females in the asylum because in the story, in the deeper story, all of the women were taken out for some reason. And uh, so, to get a wife, he basically <laughs> tries to attempt to give literally every man in there a sex change. Right. Um, so, so you can have a family. Yeah. So what do you think of him, though? Like, as you were, like, trying to get away from him, like, after the whole almost being, um, what was the word he gave? Something about, like, giving birth to his family kind of deal. Like, he's going to snip there, snip here, and then you're going to be all set. It's just like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on the table, and he tells you, he, he's going, like, he's telling you what he's going to do to you while you're on the, the table. And then, uh, just as he's about to, I don't know, perform the operation. Yeah, we'll just say that. <laughs> then, uh, he gets, uh, that dude comes and saves you, doesn't he? Pretty much, yeah. He, like, saved you right at, like, the most perfect time into... The perfect moment, yeah. <laughs> I actually enjoyed Eddie before he ends up getting killed, which, um, I believe I heard something that the wall rider actually kills Eddie when you're getting choked by him, like, near the end. I don't know if you heard anything okay. about that. I always thought the roof collapsed or something, but I don't know. I've never really understood how he dies. <laughs> I hear the wall rider comes in to save you, and that's why he gets hung up there. So, and then, like, the wall rider grabs you down. Because at this case, it's not really wall rider. It's um, the other character there, uh, Miles, at this point in time. So, I hear my. So, I, from what I hear, it's Miles as the wall rider trying to save you. Trying to let you escape, kind of thing. Isn't All right, okay. I didn't know that, but. Well, that's what I hear because it, it, in a way it kind of makes sense because then you see Wall Rider again near the end just as you're about to walk out of the asylum. Uh, what's his face? Uh, pushes you back and then he, he says something like, You ain't going to escape the asylum to rat on us or whatever. And then Wall Rider comes oh, in and the tears them guy. apart. Yeah. And then he comes in, or not Is the preacher, guy, the other guy. You know the one that destroyed the radio? Him. That guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, the suit. The guy in the suit. Yeah, the guy in the suit. I think he's, like, part of the... Cor uh, what was the corporation? Markov? Markov Corporation. Uh, Murkoff Corporation. Yeah, yeah. Murkoff, yeah. He was, um... He was a scary character, to be honest. I found him a pre pretty scary. Um, Even though he wasn't a monster. But the fact that he was kind of, mm. like, in the shadow watching... Just, like, pure evil, you know? Right. All this stuff's going on, it, and all he wants to do is save his own skin, and he's willing to, like, kill to, to right. like, keep his reputation and stuff. Right. But, yeah, um... So, yeah, you, so you versed the suit man at the very end, which he pushes you down. He's about to, like, stab you or some shit, but then Wall Rider, or Miles, at this point, he kills him. And then you can walk out the door. Kind of like when you uh, get into my old Jeep, and when you pull out the uh, camcorder one last time and turn it into night vision, you can actually see Miles in his true form at the wall rider w walking out of the asylum. So he's kind of yeah. like, I finally got out of the asylum kind of deal. Even though he's not in body form, he's in the wall rider form, I guess we'll say. Yeah. I guess, but um, the wall rider wants to get out as well, don't, don't they? So I don't know what happens there uh, after that. So you um, can find out in that last two. I don't know, because actually this comes to the next thing. So before we talk about Outlast 2, um, did you actually know that after Whistleblower, Red Barrel Games actually put out four free uh, Outlast comics about the Murakov ah, yes. Corporation? Oh, you did. I haven't read them. You haven't? No, no, I should probably read them. I would actually read them, man. They're 25 pages long. I know they're digital, 
but um, it doesn't really take you that long to read them. But it's actually really unique, uh, cool what they talk about. Like some, like they talk about Chris and Traeger, and I believe they actually show you what they looked like before uh, whatever happened to them, the experiments or whatever. And then it goes into um, what was the guy, the the final reporter's name in the DLC of Whistleblower? What was his name? You remember? Ah, uh, uh, the coder that you play as. Ah, oh, Flip. I can't remember. I can't remember. Well, anyway, uh, the, since you escape out of the asylum through Mile Jeep, uh, it actually continues his story. So you actually get to see more of his story a little bit. Okay, because you see him upload all the data. Don't right. You? Yeah, and his family's in trouble so and I all guess, that. Is it after that or... Yeah, it's right after that. Yep. It takes place right after okay. that. Okay. Cool. I'm going to look these up after. <laughs> it's right on redbarrelgame.com. It's right under their uh, comics section on their website, which I will also post the link again after this podcast is over for anybody still um, that haven't read them still. But they, they are very entertaining. But, yeah, so Outlast 2, uh, Jack, did you play the Outlast 2 demo? I did, and I thought it was really good. I know, like, a few people said they didn't really like it. It was a bit different, but I I really enjoyed it. Well, what well, did you enjoy about it? What, like, what, I don't know if enjoyed is the right word. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Like, what did you... Yeah. What, um, well, what did you like about it, we'll just say? I like the setting. So you like the fact that it was the like desert. a farm environment, like a big farm instead of like one small building at the asylum? Yeah, I thought it was a good, a good setting because I've always find like stuff in the middle of nowhere is scary because you're on your own, you've got no help around and stuff. Right. So I thought that was good. Um, it is proper messed up. And that was only a small snippet, like, right. there was something in there I didn't, re- didn't really want to see. <laughs> that was only the demo. Right. But, uh, so what do you think of the, um, we, we call, we're calling him the Tongue Monster, because we don't know his real name yet, but what do you think of this Tongue Monster guy, when, um, you know, you're, like, hearing these weird sounds, like, coming from the well, and then you creep up to the well, and then you get pulled down because the tongue grabs you and pretty much drags you down yeah. into the school. What did you? How did you play out that part? Um, I knew so well. <laughs> Something was going to come out of the well. I just didn't know what. Right. Uh, so when it was like a big tongue thing, it is. It was very different to what Outlast for me was. So. Right. There hasn't been really any, but huge monsters or anything, so it was right. a bit of a surprise. Right. I'm interested to see what they do with it. Well, what did you think of, did you get scared, by the way, when, um, you know, you're in the school, or did you, like, happen to pull out your camcorder after you, um, you uh, set off the music box, and then, like, the walkers start going crazy, but did you, um, did you hide in the walker, or did you actually stay out? in the hallway with the camcorder with the night vision. Because if you actually stay out in the hallway with the night vision, you can actually see this weird, dark <laughs> shadow thing, like, zip by you. I did stay out, yeah. Did you happen to panic, and, though, uh, with the night vision, or did you not even <laughs> do that? I did, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so did you see the shadow figure thing? I saw something. I nearly fell off my chair when I when he jumped out at me. Right. Yeah, that, that guy seemed really interesting. Just like the guy that chased you. I actually that as well. Nice. And there's a video on my Twitch of me doing the jump scare. Nice. Yeah, me and uh, me and Tessa, my girlfriend, uh, we did like a commentary video while I was playing the demo for like the second time. She was helping me give thoughts on the on the demo kind of deal. And what our thoughts were for, like, Outlast 2. But, so, after playing the demo, um, 
um, what are you kind of looking forward to for Outlast 2? Like, kind of like I mentioned this, or, yeah, like I mentioned this before, just like Tessa did with her um, all-lady episode about Outlast, the horror. Um, do you hope that they deliver Outlast 2? And what I mean by that is, like, do you hope they make it scarier than the first one and not watered down? Uh, yes, I think, well, I believe Red Barrel is going to, after the demo, I believe they can make it like 10 times scarier than Outlast 1. And Outlast 1 was flipping scary, so I'm sure, I'm sure they'll, they can do it, and I hope they do it because that's right. like the reason I played Outlast, because it was scary. <laughs> right. Which, um, out of curiosity, how did you first hear of Outlast? Uh, the first time I saw Outlast was, uh, I think I saw a few people on YouTube play it. Uh, I didn't watch any full playthroughs. They were just doing, like, you know, like, the classic, like, just shouting at the screen, being scared and that. Right, Kind of, like, playing up at the camera. Right. I'd seen that a few times, and those... Videos didn't really interest me. Uh, so when it came out on PlayStation Plus, that's when I downloaded it and played it. And uh, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so um, one last question about Outlast, and then we'll continue. But uh, did you happen to see the physical cover of the, like, actual copy that you can get out on uh, April 25th when that last two comes out, but did you happen to notice the artwork for the uh, physical case? I didn't uh, look at it properly. I knew it was coming out, but... So you haven't seen it at all? I've seen it. I haven't... You haven't really looked at it? I've studied it. Well, anyway, uh, just to help you here, um, if you actually study it, Jack, I've noticed when I looked at it on GameStop.com, because that was actually so far the only place I can see it for pre-order right now, which is kind of weird, but um, anyway, I noticed um, Traeger's on it, and I noticed, um, uh, what's his face was on it, I want to say Chris Walker was also on it too, but the other guy is like new, like he's kind of... I hate using the word, but it's true, but right. he's, yeah. he's like chubby. It's a chubby guy all the way to the right, and I've never seen him before. So it makes me wonder what this guy is, because I'm assuming he's going to be a big role in Outlast 2. Uh, yeah, I see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you see. Uh, yeah, he's definitely a new character, 100%. Yeah, so it makes it makes me wonder when I first saw that, like, what type of role this guy has. I would, yeah, I would assume it's like a Chris Walker or Trey, like a a main character. Right. So yeah. hopefully you'll have a good personality and all that, and right. he's one of the main like kind of figures that's always going to be over here. Right. Um, my other friend was mentioning that he might know, like, what the, what Red Barrels could do with DLC-wise, too, and they were thinking, um, when Outlast 2 comes out, since it's about a husband and a wife trying to get some evidence about this, like, missing people that gone missing, so it pretty much points them to this farm, and they were saying, like, or my friend was hoping that, like, um, within the main game, that somehow you kind of cross paths with your wife, and then he's hoping with the DLC that you play as his wife, so you can kind of see, like, what okay. she went through. Do you kind of like that idea? I do like that, yeah. I like that a lot. I kind of hope they do do something like that, because that would be pretty neat. Kind of like what they did with the Evil Within, with uh, Kidman. You got to see her background yes. story. This is the thing, like, I always this is, I always think this, like, when you're looking for someone who's been kidnapped in a game or a film or something, you're always thinking, what's the actually, what is the other person actually doing? And 
And I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah, I'd, I agree with it. Um, so yeah, so everybody get your panties and diapers ready because Outlast 2 comes out next month on the 25th of April. And you can also get, uh, it's called Outlast Trinity where you can get Whistleblower, uh, with the main game of Outlast and Outlast 2 on one disc for like, I think it's like 40 bucks. So it's not that bad at all. But, um, yeah, so let's keep going a little bit, uh, because I do have to pick up my girlfriend pretty soon, so it kind of sucks, because I would like to get most of these questions, but, um, let's see how far we can get. We can do a part two someday. <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, so yeah, we can see what we get to, uh, before we have to call it quits, but, um, so, okay, so the next question is, what other horror games have you streamed since, uh, Outlast? Oh. Uh, since that last, I've done uh, Slender Man. That was fun. I did enjoy uh, that. I've done the Resident, the Resident Evil games as well. Most recently, Resident Evil 7, of course. Oh, uh, not to cut you off, but before I forget, uh, did you hear the newest news about Capcom? What they're going to be doing this autumn? No. Uh, did you ever play Resident Evil Revelation, the first one? With uh, Geo Valentine? I didn't. You are they didn't doing that? an HD remake? They are. It's coming out in autumn. Ah, so I might have to pay that up. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that would be good for you since you never played it. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. But please continue. So you were saying um, Red and Evil, which I think I saw you stream the, the Red and Evil, the first one, the remaster that they did. Uh, Red and Evil 4, of course, which, in my opinion, was the last good Red and Evil game, because that was Shinji Mikami's last <laughs> Red and Evil. Yeah, um, Red and Evil 7 was really good. I uh, didn't really care for it. No? Okay, fair enough. Uh, maybe one day, Jack, will We'll have a, maybe you can join us that day when we do a uh, Red and Evil conversation, because you're more than welcome to join that, too, to help defend it if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> so we can have a good discussion about it. Oh, yes. Good. Yes. But uh, you also streamed Evil Within, because I remember you uh, doing that. I remember watching you with yeah. that. And I don't... You turned me on to that, actually. Did I? I forget. Did I? And that was... <laughs> Yeah, you did. Yeah, I can't remember <laughs> that. I don't. I don't know why. Probably, <laughs> probably because I was just so excited that it was Shinji Mikami's game, where he finally went back directing a game that I knew I was gonna love, which I did. Did you love it? Yeah, even that within? was a fantastic game. Oh God, yeah. Did you play all the DLCs? By the way, there was only three of them. But I did. Yeah, I didn't finish the uh, the keeper last one though. The- the Boxman one. Yeah, the, yeah keeper. the Keeper. He he had an interesting story, too, which um, you'll get to know, too, when you if you ever go back to play the Keeper DLC. You'll actually get to see the Keeper's uh, backstory as well. So you'll see he's not just some uh, angry guy with a box head, I guess I'll say. Um yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so when you were streaming, or playing even, oh, you also did PT, too. PT, which, unfortunately, I came in just as you were terrified. And um, because my girlfriend kind of um, loves horror, too, she was wondering about this game. And I said, I don't know, you can't play it anymore because PlayStation got rid of it. But um, now, Jack, with the new PlayStation 4 update, you can if you have a USB 3.0, which is like, I forget what it is, 250 megabyte, gigabytes, I mean, or whatever, you can actually take game applications now and put them on the USB. So I'm almost thinking about getting one of those USBs and transferring PT off my system and locking up that freaking USB, though. But... Okay. Um, but I did go back with Tessa because she did some working at that game too. And she actually told me herself that she said, fuck that. I am never playing that game because I 
couldn't even do it. So I wouldn't be able to do it. But you'd be cut off like well loads in, so I can hear you. Oh um, well, what what part did you not hear me say? I said you could transfer games onto USB. Yeah, you could so you tra- can transfer PT on. Yep. And then um, I didn't hear anything else. But... <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I pretty much just said um, my girlfriend did some research on it, and then she came back saying she wouldn't fucking play it because it would scare the would have been the hell out of her. <laughs> so we ended up watching you because that's why I was asking about your PT video that one time because I was just like, I remember you streaming it, and I remember coming in and you were already terrified so i missed whatever was terrifying you and so as i rewatched it i was just like ah i see now what i miss <laughs> that game man it was a masterpiece it was an art seriously it was so good but i couldn't play it again it's like let me ask you this do you still have it or did you get rid I of it i do have it yeah okay good but you I were... upgraded my hard drive in my PS4. Nice. And I actually went and got another hard drive just so I could back it all up. So I got two copies of very nice PC essentially. Very nice. Very I love nice. that game, but don't at the same time. It's the most stressful so... experience. One of one of the most stressful experiences so I've what... ever had. What, well, what about PT was, like, terrifying you? I You were kind of, like, talking about it when you were streaming it, from what I was seeing. You were saying something like, just the environment and, like, the sounds alone and everything else, especially the, uh, what was her name? Liza? 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 Lisa, I Lisa, think. Everyone's calling yeah. her Lisa. Yeah. 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 Well, I think one of the main things was the unknown. It was, like, familiar, but not at the same time. So, when you first start, you go through the corridor, and right. you know it's going to be scary. Right. You then make your way around to the door, and you go through the door, and you come back to the same place. And it's a corridor, but something's changed. And it's that constant cycle of you don't know what's coming next. You think something's going to jump out of you and there's some weird like there's some weird stuff going on like noises uh in the bathroom bathroom's always scary especially if they're dirty i don't know why especially <laughs> with the whatever like in, a, the, in the sink the fetus or whatever that sink, thing is yeah. stuff like that when it comes to that sort of stuff i get freaked out um but yeah it's so it's different but it's the same, it's the same corridor, and you go through it a few times. But um, you just like something changes each time, and then you see the Lisa, and so you've got an extra thing of stress added to you. It's horrible. It's horrible. Well, not just that, but you gotta like piece together this photo so you can stay alive, so that way, like Lisa can't kill you. And then you got to wait yeah, for the yeah, baby yeah. laugh, which was like three baby laughs. And then you had to hold still, even with your controller, I guess. And then you had to, yeah. like, answer the phone. There's never, like, there hasn't, well, when it first came out, you were meant to figure it out all by yourself. And uh, you literally didn't know what you had to do. Right. Like, there's no, like nothing was said about it. Mm. Right. Which even the creative themselves who made PT, uh, they were shocked at how fast we uh, figured out their game, I guess. So. I think someone figured it out, like, by accident. That's probably which, what happens with any game. Which um, is not that surprising, to be fair. Because if you've got, like, hundreds of thousands of people playing this game... Like, one of them is going to do the right thing for figure it out. Yeah. Accident. Yeah. So, I guess, um, since I sh- probably should call it after this, and then we'll have to do, like, a part two, but, um, did you ever beat PT? Like, did you ever see what it was supposed to have been? 
<laughs> Myself, personally, I didn't, but my sister did. And uh, so I did see the ending, like, properly. And, yeah, it was fantastic. It was great. So, I guess, uh, what what are your thoughts on the whole Konami um, canon Silent Hills? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think it's a travesty that it got cancelled and <laughs> Konami is stupid. I agree. They had a winning formula there. Everyone was hyped for it. It was probably the best demo. People were even giving it game of the year. Yeah, um, even though it was like a playable teaser, but yeah, that was like number one. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, but it's excited. Sorry. You're cutting out a little bit, Jack. The amazing thing, you know, it had Hideo Kojima, had uh, Guillermo del Toro, can't say that, and uh, uh, Norman Reedus, and everyone loves all three of those, so. Right. You Crazy. were kind of cutting out, Crazy so I, I don't know. Well, you were kind of just cutting out, so I don't know what three things you were saying. You just said something about Norman Reedus, and I think Walking Dead, and I have no idea what the hell the other one was. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's all good. I said, uh, um, uh, I said Hideo Shima, Guillermo, Norman Reedus, those, those three. So, like, it's a winning combo. Why did they cancel it? I don't know. I don't know. I guess it was just Konami, just retarded move, as I call it. Konami being Konami, Konami out of work. Yeah, Konami just being stupid. But, uh, Jack, I uh, want to thank you for your, your time, even though, like, we have to cut it short, and I can't really ask you all the questions that I have. But, unfortunately, when the snowstorm comes in, you just got to take your girlfriend to work because she doesn't have four-wheel drive. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... It was a pleasure to have you on here. You're more than welcome to always come on our show, or my show, whatever you want, you want to call it. Um, <laughs> but uh, just for for the sake, Jack, um, for right now, where can people, like, find you for, like, streams and know, like, what's up? Uh, I stream over on Twitch and at Masuka101. You can find me on Twitter as well, at Masuka101. Um, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I don't have a YouTube channel anymore. Right. Well, you're, uh, uh, you're yeah, redoing it. Cool, yeah, yeah, I'm going to redo it. So maybe next time I'm on, I'll be something else. <laughs> yeah, know. right. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to plan something definitely with your schedule because I know we're in a t different time frame. You're like five hours ahead of me. So, um, yeah, but, but, uh, for everybody else, um, thank you for listening to this little short, little off season podcast. We actually made it to at least six questions out of the 10 questions that I was going to ask them. So at least there will be a part two with Jack. So if you guys liked it, please make sure to uh, share with all your friends. Make sure to give my buddy Jack here a great big follow. Because he is a very good streamer, and he's a very good friend to have, and he will make all your nightmares come true. <laughs> so uh, until that's the plan. yeah, that's the plan <laughs> exactly. So until then, um, everybody that's listening, stay scary.